What you're looking at is the classic baking stone. It is the tool of choice when baking the perfect artisan pizza. Pizza, I can do this. This is not my forte. We want to see a unique and innovative artisan pizza. One with surprising textures and delicious flavor combinations. We provided you with a specialty pantry in the equipment room, filled with an array of gourmet ingredients. You have 60 minutes to prepare your dough and then top and bake your pizza. The home cook who impresses us the most will receive a huge advantage in the upcoming elimination challenge. Are you ready? Yes, chef! I'm going to come out guns blazing. And there's nothing that's gonna stand in my way. Time starts. Hot water, hot water coming through. Careful, guys. I am like a kid in a candy store. Oh, look at this, look at this. I see spinach. I see smoked salmon. I want to take on a Florentine pizza. If you underestimate how difficult it can be to create a perfect pizza, you're already losing. We're asking them to be innovative. <laughs> They've got a great pantry to select from. Sometimes when you have too many options, you'll overcomplicate things. So I'm looking for somebody who really understands all the flavors and exactly what they're doing. I just put a little bit of maple syrup in my dough. Pizza, baby. I'm gonna make a black mission fig pizza today with a few other interesting toppings. It's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna make a steak and mushroom pizza. Really like to show them that, you know, I belong here. What would you do? I would do a mushroom pizza, a little onion, maybe a wonderful light but aromatic cheese. How about you? I would do a white pizza. That would do a little bit of cream cheese, I would do a little bit of smoked salmon, some caramelized leeks. I'm going for a pizza, a white pizza, like a pizza bianco, ricotta with some beautiful figs, balsamic and honey. I make pizza at home, it's me and my sister's thing. I'm doing this for her. What's wrong with a dessert pizza? I see peaches, pears, apples. That'd be good, actually. All these fruits will bake well. I'm making a peach and fig with a bit of Stilton and goat cheese. I'm just gonna try to get creative. I have to admit, I don't often make pizza. You have 30 minutes left. Ouch. David. Yes, Chef. Tell me what, uh, what you've decided to put on top of your pizza. Mine's gonna be a, a vegetarian pizza. I, I call it the fun guy, just like me. It's gonna be all uh, all mushrooms. And what is this? That's a, a made of duck cell. Chopped mushrooms, onion, little garlic, all cooked down. Yes. Looks good. Thank you, David. Best of luck. I'm making a seafood pizza with white sauce. It's sort of like a coquille Saint-Jacques, but I'm doing it on pizza dough. Even though I was knocked down, I'm not out of the game. I'm here to stay. 20 minutes! You have 20 minutes left. Hey, Ava, do you eat your pizza with a knife and fork or with your hands? I actually use chopsticks to eat my pizza. Cody, how you doing? Uh, you're on a bit of a time crunch. Where's your pizza? Hiding in the oven. I just, Hiding in the oven? I just topped it. What's on your pizza? Uh, blue cheese, uh, cream sauce. I did a little bit of reduced balsamic vinegar and sherry, shallots and thyme. Kind of perfume that sauce. A little bit of brie cheese on top, caramelized fennel. Right, good luck. Thank you, chef. Jennifer. Yes, chef. How are you doing? I'm excited for this one. It's time for me to redeem myself. Why do you feel you have to redeem yourself? I keep getting pulled off because they think I'm the weakest link. It's time for me to tell them, guess what? I'm not as weak as you think I am. So what kind of pizza are you making? Peach, some um, pancettas for some saltiness, and then uh, fresh mint and basil. So is that a dessert type pizza? It sort of straddles between? It straddles between. The key is to find that right balance, right? Exactly. You think you can pull that off? I can pull that off. And now we pray. And it's very tricky to do this properly. Everything needs to work. Crust, sauce, toppings, control of the heat. Lynn made a cream sauce for her seafood. She's made a very nice crust. Sabrina's pizza does not look right. Way too much crust on the exterior. I like what David's doing. He's had a little cream to uh, his duck cell, so it's made it very creamy and rich. Five minutes! Five minutes left! You know what a really elegant pizza is? Is one that has the fried egg on top. I love that. It's hot in here. As long as these quail eggs cook up nice, we're golden. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. My egg needs to come together down to the absolute wire. 10, 
nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands up! It smells like pizza in here. Ooh, I feel the heat. The egg's not quite where I want it to be. And it looks, it looks perfect. The shiitakes are nice and brown. I'm happy. After observing and sampling throughout the challenge, the judges will now take one final look to select the top pizzas for tasting. You had 60 minutes to create a MasterChef worthy artisan pizza. There are three pizzas that we can't wait to take a closer look at. The first home cooked, we like to call up, made a pizza that showed both finesse and craftsmanship. They better try this pizza. It looks awesome! Please come up. David. Come on, David. All right, Dave. I call it the fungi. It's got a portobello duck cell base, some masataki mushrooms, chantelle mushrooms, enoki mushrooms, and a uh, white balsamic dressed arugula. That crust. It's lovely and crunchy, with a little chew to the center. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you, Chef. You've taken a single ingredient, mushrooms, and made it shine on your wonderful pizza. Nicely done. Thank you, Chef. It looks like something that I really want to sink my teeth in. The aruga perfectly flavored with a little bit of acidity from the balsamic, breaks into the richness of the cheese. I like it. Thank you, Chef. The second home cook that we'd like to call up Come on. feels that they have something to prove in this competition. I am positive they're gonna call my name. The pizza that we want to see belongs to... Jennifer. I did what I call summer fresh, and it's peaches, pancetta, balsamic glaze, walnuts, and a little bit of basil and mint. The balance, the bacon, cheese, peach. Not only can you cook, you can cook with style. balance of sweet and savory, you manage to make it work. And that is not easy. And if I could give any of you other home cooks a little advice, that would be not to underestimate Jennifer. That is an amazing pizza. Well done. This is the big turning point for me in this competition. Now my competitors can see what I'm really capable of. The third home cook on our list used a refined combination of beautiful ingredients. And that home cook was... Come on, come on. Cody. Yeah. This magical creation is me on a pizza. Right on, man. Hey, Cody. Chef, I call this pizza the fifth dimension. It has uh, caramelized fennel, sautéed uh, chanterelle and bluefoot mushrooms, beautiful black mission figs, a quail's egg on top, the sauce is a reduction of cream. It's done with a sherry wine and balsamic vinegar gastrique. Essence of unicorn, angel tears. It's also scented with a little bit of thyme and rosemary. Your pizza has rich, bold, earthy flavors to it that are softened by the creaminess of the cheese and the sauce and is a killer combination. Thank you, Chef. Mm. It's flawless. If you continue to cook this way, you will win this, the whole thing. We got the pasta pajol. We got our sweet potato, green beans. We got our halibut. We're looking good. Green beans got to go over there. Put the pasta here. 
I'm gonna start at the end, okay? You're the boss, Pino. Meanwhile, the white team is still in the kitchen, struggling to load their food into their carriers. You don't know how these things work. You keep it hot in one and cold in another. There's no clear organization, and Dale's just screaming like a girl in the background, and nobody really knows what we're doing, so we're screwed. Who's plating what, guys? I've already been over this. You should have been paying attention whenever I went over. I was actually getting it over. I was getting it done. Okay, that's not my fault. No. When we get onto the floor, there's still a few hiccups happening. But I don't have time to keep going over it, okay? Because Kayla had cut herself in the kitchen, she doesn't know what to do. And Dale is being really mean to her. No, the other way around. Quit changing stuff. Please. This way? We want this together, okay? So they have a choice of which one to pick. Okay. Please go back to the station I assigned you to. I have this. I don't have a fucking station, and I'm gonna snap. Okay, don't get moody with me because you messed up, okay? That's not I my fault. I did not mess up. I wasn't told what to do. You couldn't handle it. That's why I switched okay. you, okay? Guys, chill, there's chill, not, chill, it, chill. It's not time for this. Yeah. It's not We're all good, this. guys. We got We're nothing. Not what do you want ground. me to do? Like, really, guys, let's grow up. Like, we're adults, let's just serve some food. Okay, I'm just gonna stand here. With only minutes to go before the Leafs arrive, the blue team's setup is also falling apart. The fish is breaking. Like, look at that plate. This looks like shit. Bring it together, guys, let's go. You show us what you want. Okay, it's breaking. Here, Perfect. put it on the Sweet. side, right here, for your potatoes and your greens. Yep. Done. Okay? And drizzle some oil. Okay. It's breaking. Let's do that. I'll follow your rule. We know what we're doing, right? The Toronto Maple Leafs are on their way over. It's either we get our stuff together or we're sinking the ship. Pitted against the blue team's pasta fajol is the white team's penne pasta in an herb puree. Make sure everything's pretty, guys, okay? And for the fish entree, the white team serving up a baked trout with carrots and asparagus, while the blue team is plating a halibut poached in oil with sweet potatoes and green beans. The Leafs are on their way. Get it done. Come on. Come on, girls. We are catering lunch for the Toronto Maple Leafs, their families, and the alumni. 51 people in total. Insanity. Hi! They're huge. It was like, oh man, these are mountain to men. Afternoon, guys. Are you guys hungry? Yeah. Next thing you know, I got Wendell Clark in my face. For a hockey boy like me, this is a dream come true. I am a hockey fan. Hockey player fan. <laughs> there you go. Amazing. Enjoy. Thank you. The players were all very good looking. Just focus on the potatoes, serve the potatoes. <laughs> like every single one of them was gorgeous. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Once a Leaf player chooses a fish or pasta dish from the blue team, they must take the same dish from the white team and then vote for their favorite after lunch. Okay, we need a new tray of fish. Okay, this is hot on my fingers, girls. Thank God I'm a plumber. Let's move it. Whoa, oh, hey. If either team runs out of food or slows down, they could lose a vote that could cost them the challenge. Just grab One second, that salad, for you. salad, salad, One second. I understand that. Salad, 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 salad. I'm so sorry to make you wait. I have no clue what Kayla's fucking doing at this point. Yeah. I could tell you a joke, but I'm not very funny, so. Um... <laughs> With a blue and white dish in front of everyone, the challenge now boils down to a question of taste. Put it this way, we never got this for a free game meal. <laughs> now, how's the food? This one's good? It's very good. Which one do you like better? I say blue's got it. Anything that's got bacon in, I'm good to go. The blue team cooked a good, uh, what was it? Halibut. Halibut. So I'll go with the blue team. I like the blue team food. I li really like this uh, pasta. I think it was good. It might have been a little overcooked, but uh, it was good. The blue team definitely uh, definitely was my favorite. Very well cooked. I was saying white. The white. I normally I would have sweet potatoes before a game. I, I did like the blue team in that sense, but I, I thought the fish on the white was better. It was a little, bit, a little more seasoned. You have just 45 minutes to prepare a world-class appetizer using these spectacular ingredients. Okay. Home cooks! Are you ready to make Jamie proud? Yes, yes chef. chef! Jamie, would you like to do the honors? I would love to. Guys, your time starts now! Woo! <laughs> Don't take all of it! I'm trying not to. So, Jamie, tell us your thinking behind these ingredients. Obviously, we're celebrating the Italian and the Mediterranean kitchen. Stingy nettles, careful, guys. 
We've got those bitter veggies, you know, the chicories, the radicchios. These all have bitter notes that will require some balancing of acidity right. or, or sweetness. I need some pecorino, please. We've got some nice, big, spicy, smoky flavors with the undoya, clams and razor clams. I love Every chef loves uh, those. There's so much opportunity in that box. There's really no excuses. No, there's a lot of options out there. I love this so bad! It's so nerve-wracking that Jamie Oliver is here watching me cook. Cooking for, my, for your idols? Pretty terrifying. I'm not going to let this opportunity slip between my fingers. Jamie, these are your ingredients, mm -hmm. so what would you do? I'd be feeling a warm salad could be really, really nice. But at the same time, I mean, clams and smoky undoya is so good. That speaks to uh, me. Tempting, tempting. Ah, uh, that hurts. Jamie Oliver's menu is Italian, so I'm going to do a little bit of a play on an eggplant parmesan. I'm going to try and do a nice uh, parmesan crisp sticking out of it to make it look really pretty. I'm going to, you know, be ballsy and do a pasta. It is incredibly risky <laughs> to make a tortellini in 45 minutes. God. But if you play it safe, you may not get noticed. <sighs> oh, this forget it's such a bloody workout. All right, let's do this. Most of my cooking skills and techniques come from watching celebrity chefs on TV. I would say, to date, this is the most important dish of my life. Jamie Oliver's, like, massive. He's an idol of mine. Trevor. Mr. Oliver. Very, very here, excited to see you, brother. What is going through yeah, So your what head. I'm going to do for you today is a roasted fall vegetable medley. Yeah, like yeah. you're thinking, like you're thinking. I mean, to be honest, I base a lot of my cooking after you. I like your approach to very simple but elevated food. I like you shave your cheese from up here and it yeah. falls all over the plate. They all think I'm doing that for style. It's not. <laughs> it's Even not. distribution. There you go, chef. You crack on. I don't want to stop you. Hey, it was an honor to meet you. Beautiful world. Thank it's going to be an honor to try your food. That's enough said. I need to witness. <laughs> Come on, cook, boys. Barry, chef, I think me and you are the oldest in the room today. I think I've got you by a couple of years. OK, Maybe. well, I'm chasing you behind. So um, <laughs> what we got? I am going to simply braise some clams with this Anduya sausage. Yeah. And I'm going to serve all of that together with some herb ricotta gnocchi. Right. Confit heirloom cherry tomatoes. Patty pan squash, and I'm going to work in some rapini, some escarole, and the uh, sting and nettle. Do you think there might be a two, few extra bits here? Feel the conviction in a smaller cluster of flavors, OK? That's all I'll say. I'm very excited. Thank you. And equally worried. Good luck. Thank you. Big time pressure. It's not every day that you get to cook for Jamie Oliver. For a guy that's wanted to be a restaurateur since he was 15 years old, it's a pretty big deal. Come on in, Aaron. Chef, what's going on? How's it going, Chef? Yeah, very, very good. I can see a few things, and that kind of makes me happy. We're going to do a little bit of a play on surf and turf with razor clams, some enduya, and play the sweet and bitter root by going with some of the punterelle. I'm trying to keep it simple. I think that that's the spirit of Italy and Italian cooking, mm -hmm. really honoring the produce. Go for it, brother. Thank you very I'm much, Chef. I'm feeling the love. These clams are friggin' gorgeous. 20 minutes! You have 20 minutes left! 20 minutes. A little short on time, which seems to be my downfall. I am very much under the gun. Man alive, why did I do this to myself? How do you do this every week? This is a lot of stress. I haven't even stuffed my tortellini yet. I don't think I'm going to finish. <sighs> Young Taya. Hi. Wait, what's going on? I'm making a tortellini. So I've got like a ricotta sausage, um, and then I'm going to do a peach sauce. But I'm running out of time right now. You're all right. Remember, those ravs only take a couple of minutes to cook. Only tip I would say is remember when you're doubling this pasta up, it swells in the water. Right. So just maybe question thickness of pasta. Right. But okay. don't freak out. OK. Don't Thank freak you, out. Chef. Be confident. I'm going to try to do a couple thinner ones. Take what he said. And hopefully, I don't hyperventilate. Saved you. Jamie Oliver is like my culinary superhero. I was bullied a lot when I was younger, so I can sometimes be a pretty anxious person, but when I'm in the kitchen cooking, it all just kind of fades away. Matt, how you doing, brother? I'm fangirling out so hard right now. <laughs> That's OK. You take your time. So what's going on? So I'm just trying to do uh, my take on a little bit of a lemon tarragon for Blanc here. Yeah. I'm going to do some cauliflower puree. I'm going to do some razor clams and lay those nicely over that. Very, very nice. Thank you. 
I always feel wrong. It's like going through someone's underwear drawer. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like I should like behave yourself. Good luck, brother. Thank you so much. Very exciting. It's great to talk to you. Five minutes. You only got five minutes left to impress our VIP guests. You know who. <laughs> Doing this show is, like, new for me. Like, I'm properly scared for them. So, Jamie, you think they're overthinking it and maybe biting off more than they can chew? I think some of them are definitely making their life more complicated. Young Barry over there had really good principles, but then never stopped talking, and it went on and on and on and on, and you're like, wow. He's, he's just making it more difficult for yes. himself than he needs to. We've got Taya making tortellini. In 45 minutes, it's kind of brave. She could absolutely pull that off, although she's quite nervous. I need to hustle a little. What about Aaron? What do you think of his dish? He's gone for real simplicity. Technically, it tells me that he's very clear about what he wants. He's sexy. There's so much at stake here. They want to impress. Schmutz on my plate. Actually, no. I'm not going to do that. One minute. You have one minute left. One minute. I want to see beautiful plate. I need it to be perfect. Why am I shaking? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands up! Woo! Woo! Let me go, man. Good job. Love you. All four judges have been observing throughout the challenge. They now take one final look before selecting the three most promising contenders for a spot on the menu at Jamie's Italian. The first dish we're calling up was made by a home cook who grabbed a lot of ingredients and found an enticing way of bringing them all together. Please bring up your dish. Barry. Wow. Good job, Barry. Jamie Oliver wants to taste my dish. It sounds trite to say that it's awesome, but it's awesome. <laughs> I've got manila clams braised with andouille sausage and pan crisp greens. Here we go, bro. You look surprised when, uh, when we called you out there. It's my first time being called up. Oh, really? Yes. Mm. Delicious. Good flavors, good seasoning. I like the char on the green tip. The clams are not overcooked. I think you've done a great job. Thank you. But what I would do here is I would try and amplify that natural broth that comes out of the clam. I'd probably go in a bowl and keep it hot and steamy. But I think all around it's celebrating loads of elements there that are delicious. Well done, Barry. Well Thank done. Thank you. Joe Bastianich. Hi, guys. An idol of mine. I'm super intimidated to cook for him. Pretty amazing. It was pretty cool. Pretty cool. He's poised. He's elegant. I think I'm a starstruck. For the toughest mystery box challenge yet, we've invited the toughest judge from MasterChef US. You have made it to the final floor of MasterChef Canada, and that is a testament to your ability to cook great food and to partake in one of the greatest culinary challenges in the entire world. So congratulations to you all. Joe came out of the big mystery box. Now it's time to find out what's in yours. One. Two. Three. Lift. Everything contained in your mystery box has been handpicked by me. I've given you the king of all Italian cheeses, Grano Padano. Tender veal, calamari, pork sausage, and pancetta, fresh burrata, and from my vineyard, a wine I make myself in northeastern Italy called Vespa Bianco. That's for cooking, not drinking. These ingredients are like top dog ingredients, like best of the best. Very Italian. Simple, but they have to be done the right way. Whoever wins this mystery box will get a huge advantage in the upcoming elimination challenge. You have 60 minutes to cook something Italian-inspired to impress Joe Bastianich and keep you in this competition. Your time starts now. I am absolutely cooking for my life today. Somebody's going home and it's not gonna be me, that's for sure. Just think about my kids and why I'm here and what I'm supposed to be doing here. Just trying to do my best. 
There's so much good stuff in that box between the veal, the sausage, the cheese, the grana padano. You can make fresh pasta. You can do a classic veal dish. The opportunities are limitless. I'm making veal uh, loin medallions with a spatzel, fried capers, a little tomato salad, and I'll be right back. <laughs> If they overcomplicate it, I think that could be a big problem for them. You gotta keep things pure and simple. With great classic Italian ingredients like this, it's often a case of less is more. Less is more. Super excited and nervous at the same time. I'm gonna go straight Italian today. Fresh pasta, tomato sauce, freshly chopped basil. Make a fresh pasta for an Italian. You know, there's always been a century debate about who invented the pasta, the Chinese or the Italians. Oh, that's you not know, much of a debate. You know, since you guys copy our pasta, <laughs> we just copy your handbags. <laughs> but, uh, you know, for, for me, it would just be pasta. Just pasta. Pasta, nice tomato sauce. Simple. Thing. I'm just most worried about the dish tasting good. It's just it, how everything will come together. My pan is smoking because I overheated it too long, so I get rid of it. I'm dying inside. I'm going crazy inside. I'm thinking, okay, next step, next step, next step. Hi, Marita. Hi, Chef. So what are you making? Mediterranean stew mm -hmm. with calamari, and I'm going to do a roti, Trinidadian bread. A roti? Are you from Trinidad? I am from Trinidad, yes, wow. Chef. I hope that I can impress you today with a little Trinidadian Italian fusion. Do I want fusion, or do I want, like, pure Italian food? Like... I think you want to see a little bit of us. An important history about someone's going home as well. You were number one or you number four? I would like to say that I'm number one. Good luck. Thank you, Chef. All right, Eric, how you doing? Good, how are you, Chef? Today I'm gonna try and go a little more simple. I don't want to be super chaotic in front of Joe. What's in the tomato sauce? Just the tomatoes? Just the summer on the tomatoes? No, I'm gonna I have the infused flavor from the sausage. Uh-huh. And you're gonna put the garlic. Is there a vampire convention happening? You're gonna saute the onion and all that pork fat? Yes. A little heavy, no? Everything I was doing for my sauce, you questioned. You're gonna put some wine in it? It's too late now. Never too late, my friend. Fuck, man. I think Eric's gonna have a problem with keeping it simple, and I think that he's gonna go home. Okay, Tamara, what do you got going on? What are you gonna make? Uh, I'm going to do uh, veal uh, loin medallions with a spatzel. Chef, I do fusion. You do fusion? Yes, Chef. Fusion without confusion? Yeah, absolutely, Chef. Where's your veal loin? Hopefully that's cooking already. In about five minutes. I'm gonna put it on. So you haven't started cooking the veal, or veal loin yet? No, Chef. I'm from Alberta, so I'm very familiar with proteins. I think that's definitely one of my strong points. I'm a very positive person, but, you know, one dish will send you home. Good luck. Hi, Kayla. So what are you making? I'm making a stuffed veal loin. Stuffed with what? The Parmesan cheese, burrata, basil, some rendered down pancetta, and a little bit of chili flakes. Where's your veal loin? Did you, it's, did you I stuff just it popped it in the oven, yeah. It's, it's in stuffed, the oven? it's in, in the oven. I butter basted it. Very Frenchy, very fancy. You think Italian food, you think simple. All of a sudden, you're like butterflying a veal loin and filling it and stuffing it. it seems very ambitious. You know, I just really want to impress you. Somebody's going home. And there's only four of us. I mean, those odds aren't good. At the end of the day, that veal has to deliver. Absolutely, Chef. You can talk the talk and hope you can walk the walk. So, some very interesting things happening out there. At this point, I think Kayla, if she can pull off the stuffed veal, and if it's still pink and moist in the middle, that would be very impressive, but very, very, very ambitious. I'm really interested in trying Marita's roti. She's frying it off in a little skillet pan right there, and uh, by the look on her face, she seemed to be quite pleased with it so far. Eric, who's gone the traditional route, I think he's a little bit confused with what Italian, simple Italian pasta means. Like, I've seen a lot of raw garlic. You have just one minute left. I'm worried about overcooking the calamari. It's my biggest concern. I need to make sure that that calamari is cooked perfectly, because if I don't, I may be leaving the Master Chef Canada kitchen. Last touches. Want to see good-looking plates? Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stop. Hands in the air, everybody. Good job. There's always a chance in top four to go home, and I took a risk. I hope it paid off. I kept it simple today. I don't want to seem very frantic in front of Joe. He doesn't know I'm, like, crazy yet, so... I don't usually cook Italian. We'll see how it goes. I'm hoping that it was cooked well. You never know. The first dish we would like to try is you, Marita. Please bring your dish up. 
Everything's riding on the calamari. I am so nervous. Okay, Marita, tell me about the dish. I did a Mediterranean calamari stew, a little bit of capas, and a roti with olives and fresh parsley. The calamari is cooked perfectly. Still very, very moist, very delicate. The tomato stew has very nice, fresh flavors. You taste the olives, you taste the onions, you taste garlic, a lot of garlic for me. It's a very, very good expression of ingredients. And I think, quite frankly, it comes together really, really strong. Good job. Thank you. Well, the dish looks beautiful. Thank you, chef. I think you've honored Italian ingredients really well here. I like the fact that you added something that's from you, which is the roti. Very strong dish. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. I am so relieved that it's cooked right. Eric, please bring your dish up. Pasta and tomato sauce could seem too simple and underwhelming, and it could definitely send me home. Tell me about the dish. It's homemade fettuccine, sausage, and crushed tomato sauce. Top with basil. It's pretty simple, though. Did you want to stay simple, or were you trying to impress? Um, I usually overcomplicate things. Today, I thought I'd stick with clean flavors. It does kind of come together as a pasta dish. It has good flavor. Try it. What do you think? So you were in my restaurant. What would you pay for that? $15. $15? dollars Are you overvaluing yourself? Uh, let's see what they say. I'm really happy this time you kept it simple. Yes, Chef. But if you're gonna charge 20 bucks for that pasta, that pasta better be right on. And I mean, from the sauce to the noodle. Texture, consistency, you hit it right on. I would say it's a very nice fish. Thank you. Kayla, could you please come with your dish? This dish could either shoot me up into top three, or it could send me home. Tell me about your dish. Stuffed veal loin with cheese, olive tapenade, crispy fried capers. Very tricky to get a stuffed veal loin. Perfect. How did you want to cook it? Medium rare, medium? Uh, medium. 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 Yeah. Let's see. Not bad. It's a medium, true medium. So you nailed the temperature. You were able to get a nice seasoned crust on the outside. The filling, I take it or leave it. The pinkness of the veal in the center is spot on, and it's moist and tender and really quite flavorful. You think you made any mistakes here? The fact there's no starch anywhere to be found. I think that it was a risk, and I think if you conceptualize a dish correctly, you don't always need starch. You nailed the cooking here. The color is perfect. It's rested, basted it properly. You think this dish is gonna take you to the next level? I hope so, chef. I don't wanna be too confident, but I think I have impressed them. My role is to do the grilled polenta. Julie's doing the sauce. Eric is helping with the meatballs, and Danielle is a swing. I'm really excited about our menu. But, oh my god, Eric is all over the freaking place, jumping into the truck, jumping out of the truck. This is me as Eric. Ah! I need garlic in here, period, because we're braising anyways. Do you know how long it's going to take me to get all that garlic? Did Julie caramelize the onions first? Yes, she is. As a team captain, Eric is afraid to delegate. I think this is a real problem. Guys, where's Eric? Eric! Huh? Michael's calling you. What are you making, guys? Uh, so we are doing uh, stuffed meatballs with crispy fried polenta yes, chef. and marinara sauce. Stuffed meatballs? Yes, chef. Polenta? Polenta. To me, that sounds like it's getting a little bit complicated. You've got to get as many of these out as possible. I would get rid of the polenta. It's just one other thing you ought to worry about. Yeah, OK. I'm not very gung-ho about the idea because I love real polenta, but we have to listen to the chefs. When they give us advice, we listen. So glad we picked Mexican. It was a great choice. Tamara, yes, give me chef. a couple of minutes. Tell me what you're working on. What's yes, on the chef. menu? We're going to do a flank steak taco with uh, a red and uh, green sauce and some charred corn. Okay. We're also going to do a shrimp ceviche. 
You're going to do a ceviche? Yes, chef. Personally, I would say drop the shrimp. Stick to one, make it delicious. OK. All right, you can yes. do that? Yes, chef. Pino, you hear that? No shrimp. Chef Michael suggests to scrap the ceviche. Great idea. Now our menu is more focused, and right away we get to work. Salt, salt, salt. Yeah, 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 yeah. 60 minutes has gone by. There's a big crowd building up, and you'll be feeding them in 60 minutes. 60 minutes? Come on, guys. we got to move a little bit faster here. My money is on the Italian right now. It's simple. People understand it. It seems like the uh, the blue team is complicating things with all these different ingredients. They got to remember that two people are serving. Two of them will not be actively preparing food. Start to complicate any of the dishes, they're going to fail miserably. But even with their new pared down menu, the red team still has over 400 meatballs to make. May I make a suggestion? What? We got to use this cheese more. We got to put a little bit of the cheese in the meatball, please. Fine. Okay. They will moisten it up, I promise you. With 45 minutes to go, Eric is starting to panic. Okay, why don't you guys go in there? We'll roll. Huh? Are you kidding me? Go in what there. What else we am I doing in there? We got this, hon. We it's, got it's this. two minutes. So what's the point? Eric is driving me crazy right now. We have 400 meatballs to cook, and I'm really worried about the time. Eric, I think you should be cooking them. Fine. Just throw it in two minutes. I'll be back. Let me just get stuff ready. Just stay in there. Julie, can you yes. help Eric? OK. And tell him to calm down. OK. Hey, Eric, I'm helping you. Uh, OK, fine. 30 minutes. You have 30 minutes left. You better have all your protein in the oven cooking. Butter, garlic, garlic butter to brush the bun with. Worry about cooking the meatballs no, first. Just, what do you mean? I'm fucking cooking the meatballs, and then I have to stand around to do it. You got to be kidding me. You've got, what, six orders here. You got raw meatballs there. You got raw meatballs behind here. You're not going to make it unless you hustle. I know, chef. I am not going to another gosh darn pressure test. Eric, you see the crowd? Massive. We're screwed. I'm really worried that there's no organization in terms of how we're going to get these subs out. The baskets are going from here to over there to here. You have to be organized. You're absolutely right, Danielle. OK, then move all the shit to the left. Danielle's making crucial decisions, and I'm agreeing. Yes. Danielle's helping me stay calm. I don't want to be frantic in a team situation, because that'll just make the whole team frantic. Just before service, we all pull it together. Yeah, so we just go. take out like this, load it up with the meatballs. That's, That's right. For the two teams to turn it around, what they've got to do is, the red team in particular, got to get their meatballs in, braising right away, and they've got to get those buns cut, cheese put on them, getting them soaked up in the marinara sauce, ready to load the meatballs in. And the blue team, they've got to start searing off that steak ASAP, ready to relax to slice. Otherwise, they're not going to make. I would agree. But with only minutes to go before lunch and a long line forming, the blue team doesn't have enough steak cut to fill more than a couple of tacos. I managed to get a small batch of steaks rested and ready to slice. I don't want to face the, the treasure test, so that's why we're really working hard today. Hey, what are you doing? Chef, I'm uh, cutting up our meat for our taco, chef. How many portions is there? There's about 10 portions. There's 200 people out there. You have one hour to serve it. Chef? You're going way too slow. Yes, chef. Hey, hey, see that? This is Frank's steak. It should be cut this way. No, chef. I'm cutting this way. Is that no good? See the grain? The chef. When you cut across the grain, it's this way. See? Cross the grain. It's very embarrassing when the chef steps in and, you know, says, that's not how you do it. That's how it's to be cut. Thank you, chef. Come on, get out here. Yes, chef. Look, you got one guy, you got cutting by himself. Thank Somebody you, should be helping him. Yes, chef. Okay, Mike, you're here, okay? Use your team efficiently. Yes, chef. Or else you're not going to be able to get the food out on time, yes, okay? Chef. Yes, chef. We're going to run out. These things could take us down. While well, the blue team struggles to get caught up on their meat prep, the red yeah. team has a sub finished and ready to sample. That's good. I like the basil on it. Eric, yes, one chef. thing you cannot afford to have is raw meatballs Absolutely, today. Absolutely, chef. I do not want to get one complaint. One man! I see a huge, gigantic line coming over to our truck, so now I'm even panicking more. Hi there. Sure. One taco, one behind. Let's go. Come on, guys. Let's do this. Morale in the red truck is really high. We're ready to get this going. Four. Okay, I need four. Cheese, cheese and basil. Very nice. There you go. I'm shocked right now how well everyone's working together. Eric has actually started to calm down. He's doing a really good job. Keep the speed up, Eric. You're doing awesome. 
Extra, extra. Kayla and Eric working side by side, not fighting. Keep it going. Five dollars can make the difference. I'm proud of Kayla because she put her differences aside. We worked great together. But like, honestly, I don't see us ever being best friends. Just loaded. It's officially a craft, people. Awesome. Look at that. There you go. Our lineup's not moving because we're not getting food out there quick enough. Nine total, nine tacos now. We need yes, a station yes. to be clear. It's just a mess in the food truck at this point. Promo. Fuck. Pandemonium. Mike is slow. Gently placing meat on the cheese, putting a nice dollop of sauce. It's cute. We're at home, but not a food truck. Tamara, I think you should be here. Mike should be there. Yeah. Okay. Where he was like, Mike, just, just get in the friggin' window. And I was like, OK, good. That's where I want to be. I want to talk to the customers anyways. Everyone's just working their tails off. Where is the onion? It's amazing how the tables have turned now. The blue truck seems so organized, so prepared. All of a sudden, the red truck, boom, in front. The meatballs are coming flying out of the red truck, but the tacos, they're having difficulty getting out. The uh, blue team has too many components going on that one dish, and they're not serving as many people. Here we are. Sorry about the wait. The red team, it's simple, it's lean, it's fast. As the red team continues to churn out their subs, the judges head into the crowd to gauge which team's meal is winning over more customers. You ate from the red team? How was it? It was delicious. Delicious. You liked it? I loved it. Yeah. And who likes the blue? Blue all the way. Mexicana truck. It's delicious. And how long did you wait for the taco? About 20 minutes. 25 minutes? Yeah. yeah. Wow. The meatball tastes delicious. They're just pumping it out. Everyone's been waiting forever to get the blue truck, so we just got our food right away. Every single $5 counts today. We need some more people. We have the idea to try and poach a couple of their customers. Hey, guys, I see you've been waiting a little while. You want to come over to our line? We're going quick. We first sent out Kayla, and she recruited quite a few customers. Good. Can we direct you over to this line? She got people from the crowd, got people from the blue team's line. Some mini meatballs, some beautiful fresh mozzarella, fresh basil, dig right in there. People are walking over from the blue line to our truck. Food is looking awesome. People are loving our subs. Like, we are winning this today. I guarantee you. Uh-oh, they just took two of our customers. Who did? They, they did? did? They have no lineup. They've got no one. If we lose customers to the red team, then we lose. And that would be honestly heartbreaking for me. We really appreciate everyone's wait here. We promise it'll be worth it. The red team is getting their food out faster. But then, Michael discovers a problem with one of their sandwiches. Row, did you say? Yeah. Let me take a look. That does look a little underdone, doesn't it? Let me get this replaced right away for you, OK? I'll be right back. Do not move. <laughs> Thank you. Eric? Yes, sir? We have a major problem here. We have a raw meatball. What? I told you earlier, we cannot afford to serve a raw meatball. Look, yes, that sir. is raw. Yes, sir. That is unacceptable. I'm absolutely devastated. This meatball could be the reason I get eliminated. OK, I need one replated right away so I can take it back to the lady. I don't want to keep her waiting. Yes, sir. They give her an extra meatball? Yes, sir. Keep an eye on those meatballs. We cannot allow them to go out raw. That freaks me out. We have to give that money back. And it could make or break us. It's bottom line today. How much money can we bring in? You guys, we need to get that line. It's all about money. I know, but we need to be a lot more careful. Cooking the meatballs, there's ground pork in it, so 100% I'm worried about raw centers, so I have to make sure the insides are cooked. These are all perfectly cooked. These are all cooked. While the red team loses time double-checking Eric's meatballs, the blue team takes the opportunity to steal back some customers. This is my big chance. The red team put out a plate that's raw, and I think that's great. This is our time to step ahead. We need someone to go work the crowd, you know, do some magic. So I quickly grab a dish, and I start working the crowd, showing people, other customers who, who bought food from the town truck, look what we have. How you doing over there? Have we tried the Mexican yet? Mexicana. We have a marinated flank steak in there. This is just what comes on the side. We have two different types of craft cheese. One's spicy, one's not. I'm Italian. They're going to have a piccolo base of each in Napoli. But today, I'm going to go Mexico. I'm the Italian who's converted today. So I tell him, I'm Italian, but I've gone Mexican. Tell him Pino sent you, and they'll take good care of you. One minute, you have one minute left. Right, here we go. Andale, andale. One more, one more, guys. We're rocking it, Eric. We're rocking it. Can you just ask them if they want spicy or not spicy cheese? We're using the craft habanero cheese and the Tex-Mex. Sure. Here, we'll give you two subs and an extra meatball each. In the dying moments of the food truck challenge, Thank both teams fun. are fighting to win over the final few customers. There's no wait in our line over here. No wait. Come over here. Our line's moving way faster. Thank you very much, sir. They are hustling. Service is over. Close the cash box now.